Gotta collect them all. Let's take a look at collections. Alright, welcome back to the Java introduction here for Minecraft and Hightail modding. And first of all, yes, I know it's called Gotta Catch Them All. But because we're talking about collections, collect them all, you know, kind of sounds a little more, you know, a little more appropriate for this topic. So we are talking about collections. This includes things like lists, array lists in specific, maps, and then also sets. So first of all, I remind you of the array. Array was a very useful tool, and I told you that we can basically think of this as a list of a certain element or a certain type of data. In our case, we use the string arrays for our questions and our answers in the previous tutorials, and we just save those kind of like this. Now, there are some limitations with this. Number one, we had to specify the size of this array and then also adding stuff. Well, I mean, you would have to call this again, right? So questions, the brackets, whatever index you wanted to change, and then basically putting in the value that we want to put in there. And now we come to lists. So a list is pretty much a very similar thing. We're just going to define one. So we're going to type in list. Now you will see that you will get this, well, I here list E Java util. This is exactly what we want. So we're going to press tab key to autocomplete. And then you will see the import will be added up here, java.util.list. Now we need an angle bracket. So basically a smaller than the other one, the closing angle bracket should then also generate automatically. And inside of here, we have to specify what type of list this is. This is a string list. Okay, fair enough. We're going uh, to auto, so also autocomplete this and we're going to call this the questions list. Just in case here, just so that we have this because it can have the same name as this variable. And then we're going to say equals new. And then it's going to say, hey, why don't you make this an array list? And this is exactly what we want to do. We want to make this an array list. So we select this and press tab once again to autocomplete. And then we just Close this with, or, you know, just finish the line with a semicolon. Now, as you can see, no need to define the length, right? It's going to be like, wait, what? You don't need to define the length? No. And that's really like the number one crazy cool thing about lists is that once you define a list, right? A list, an array list. Uh, what you can do is you can say question list dot add, and then just put in a string here. So for example, I could say something like what language is spoken in Germany. So just as an example, right, a new question, and there you go. Now this has been added to the list. The list before this line had a size of zero. Now it has a size of one. That, interesting. So what happens here is, and I just, I'm just going to duplicate this, control D. So for example, I could say something like, what is uh, the capital, capital of Canada? And then, you know, the last one, something like, they're all um, in what... Hemisphere, Brazil. I, I find it interesting that all of my questions are always sort of geography related. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from, but that's just how it is. So you can see lists, right? Basically, you can add entries more or less dynamically, right? So that's really interesting because before we had to specify, hey, this has size whatever. Now in a list, you can just add an even, and that's really the crazy thing, you can even remove stuff, right? So I can say question list dot remove. Now I can either pass in a certain index here, right? Once again, indices index works the same way. The first one is zero, second one is one, this one is then two, right? So it works the same way. So we still start counting at zero. We can also pass in the actual object that we want to remove. So this would be, for example, a string here. I could pass in the same string and then it would remove that string. It would even, as you can see, give back the Boolean whether or not it actually has been removed. Really cool. When you pass in the index, you actually get the string back that you are, have just removed. Also really cool. The remove all, we're not going to worry about that just now. And then the remove if uh, requires a predicate, which is a little bit more complicated. Let's just say that you can basically sort of filter out multiple ones that you want to remove. We're not going to worry about this too much. Like I said, we're going to just going to remove the normal one. Let's just say one for the sake of argument. So this would then remove the what is the capital of Canada. Now, I have said, so you can say basically, you know, removing is fairly easy. I, I would say so, right? So removing is just 
basically calling the remove method. Now, next thing is, hey, what about the what about the length? You know, system out print line. Let's just print out the length. Okay, fair enough, right? So this one, and then we type in length, and you can see that that doesn't exist, and that's kind of weird, right? So there is, however, the size. So in this case, when you talk about a list, you talk about size instead of length. Okay, fair enough. I mean, that's not too crazy. It's basically just the size. How do you get a certain, well, element? Well, I mean, couldn't we just, you know, do the same thing, you know, the bracket and then just put in a zero? No, that doesn't sadly work. So in Java, that doesn't work. In C Sharp, for example, when you have a list that would work, but here it's totally fine. You just call the get method and you put in the index right here. So that's actually how easy that can be. So there's nothing too crazy about this. There's one uh, more interesting thing about the list or in general, well, where you have those angled brackets, the angled brackets at the very end of the tutorial series, we're going to talk about this in a little bit more detail. And they are what's called generics. And the idea is that inside of those angled brackets, you can basically put in, well, any data type, right? And then the list will just work because obviously it doesn't really matter what type of list this is. If it's a type, uh, you know, a list of integers or a list of strings or a list of, I don't know, animals, it doesn't really matter. A list of persons, a list of online usernames, right? Whatever it might be, you should be able to put in anything there. And that is called a generic. Now, this is usually, you know, it's signified with the angle brackets. Now, what does not work is the following. I'm going to write this out, list int, right? And then I'm going to say numbers equals a new array list of int. It's something like this. You can see we're getting an error. If I hover over this, it's going to say type argument cannot be of primitive type. That means we can't use the primitive types int, boolean and such in there. Now, first of all, you're going to say, wait, that's that's kind of BS. Why, why wouldn't we be able to use those? No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. So I can basically say, you know, generics don't work with the primitive data types. Right? Okay, that's fair enough. We can we can say, okay, that's kind of BS, but okay. Well, there are wrapper classes, right? So we have some, basically the idea is we have some wrapper classes uh, you can use instead. Okay, so what we have is we can use the integer. Now with a big I, you can see right here, integer Java Lang. And that one now works. Now, the thing about it is basically, this is pretty much exactly the same thing. Okay, so this doesn't change anything. I can still say numbers.add, and I can just put in a number here, right? So 42, for example. So this still works. I can also, you know, I don't know, something else like this. So there's no reason uh, why this would be in any way, shape or form, just bad. We just have to use the wrapper classes. That's totally fine easy enough. So that's one sort of limitation I wanted to mention pretty early on, because that's kind of important. Now on to maps. So maps, the idea of maps is basically they map. So that's why they call maps, they map a key to a certain value. Okay, that's interesting. Those are basically called key value pairs. You can think of it like the following way. You can basically think of it as you put in a certain key and then a certain value gets out output. And usually what happens is that you only have like the keys have to be unique should also make sense because if I ha have non unique keys, then all of a sudden, well, which, which, uh, you know, value would I return? So that's sort of the idea. I tip in map and then I put in once again, the angle brackets. And now I have to put in two data types. Now we're going to put in two strings. This does not have to match, right? This could be an integer. This could be a load. I don't, it doesn't matter. You could put in anything that you want here. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is just the example here has both strings. They don't have to match. I just wanted to mention this very clearly. They do not have to match. And this is going to be the country to capital map. And this is going to be a new hash map in this case. So you might, might have seen right when I'm making these maps that there are some other stuff like sort of maps. There's identity linked hash map. We're not going to worry about those. Those are sort of advanced data types at the moment. We're just going to really worry about, hey, okay, what is a basic map? What is a basic list? What is a basic set? So nothing too crazy here. And now what we can do is I'm actually going to copy over the three, well, basically add additions here, because that's going to be a little bit easier. Because let's be honest, this should make a little bit of sense. So instead of using add, we're going to say put. So we're going to put something into this map. 
And what we're going to put in is, of course, a country as the key and then the capital as the value. Hopefully, this is a very illustrative example, which makes sense, right? If we have a map where we can put in a country and get out the capital, that would be a fairly sensible key value pair, right? So, so I want you to really think about this key value pair idea where you have a key and a value and you get the value back by providing the key. So for example, what we can do is we can say system out print line and then we could say country to capitals uh, or country to capital dot get and then I pass in Germany making sure I write this correctly because this one would actually not work. So very important here. And as you can see, very important or very easy actually just, you know, to get a value, you just have to supply the map of the key. And I can also ask whether or not it contains a certain key. So I could say something like system out print line and I could say it contains the Germany. Okay, so I can ask whether or not the map contains this. So I can say plus country to capital dot contains key as you can see here and then I can say Germany then let's just duplicate this and then I can say contains value can also ask that whether or not it contains the value London now that is actually not the case contains a value as you can see I can also call this method and there you go this would now be false of course because in this case we don't have this I can also very easily remove things here as well so i can say system out print line and then can i say country dot cap country to capital dot remove now i can either pass in both the key and the value very interesting or i can just pass the key and then it removes the object and returns me the value so i can for example say france as the key and then france paris key value pair is being removed here so actually fairly straightforward to remove this and a map here of course, well, hopefully, I hope that when you see the map, a lot of ideas spring to mind because this is actually really a very cool data type and you, it can be used in all sorts of different ways. And I hope that this sort of, you know, illustrates that, okay, this is very interesting. And yeah, it, it is used in uh, a lot of ways. And once again, they don't have to both be strings. You know, you could put an integer here, so it could be like a a country to population map for example something like that so i hope that that was kind of uh, interesting and then i just wanted to sort of just barely mention sets because sometimes um well they're basically very useful in minecraft modding that's why i wanted to mention them or they're, they're used there heavily so a set is a collection okay that contains no duplicates okay that's actually a fairly straightforward definition of a set so i can say set and once again, this has, it's going to have strings and this is going to be a username set. So we're just going to use our names actually. And this is going to be equal to a new hash set. As you can see, there are some other stuff, um, you know, sorted set, tree set, uh, linked hash set. Once again, we all don't need that. That's all way, way, way more advanced. So no worries there. And then we can once again add things to it by just saying add. And then, so for example, Calvin Joe. Hey, there I am. And then we can, for example, add nano attack. And then I could say the following. So if we actually look at this, right, if I do this again, if I look at add, we actually have a Boolean here. Very interesting. Why is there a Boolean returned there? Well, a Boolean is returned because if I add a an element that has already been added, I'm actually going to get a false. So what I can say is system out print line, and I can say something like usernames dot add, and then let's say FRV. And if I duplicate this and I add the same string twice, then this is actually going to return a false. So first of all, let's just go up here and see what everything is that we're going to out, uh, you know, print out. First of all, the size of the list after we've removed something should be a two. Then we're going to get what language is spoken in Germany. And then we are going to get the capital of Germany. Then we're going to get a true for contains the key and then a false for it contains the value. And then we're going to get the Paris here when we remove France from the list. So let's just print this out or let's just start this and let's see. So two, that's absolutely right. So the size here is two. What language is spoken in Germany? Absolutely right. Then we're going to get Berlin. Then we're going to say, yes, this does contain the key. It does not contain London, Paris when we remove France here. And then as you can see, the first on the first ad, I'm going to get a true. And then here I'm going to get a false. So that's very important and very actually interesting to know we don't really throw an error here 
but this might be interesting for you to know. So this is pretty much all that I wanted to show for sets. They're not too interesting. Uh, you can't really, you can't access individual uh, elements in a set. So that's also sort of a um, little bit of a restriction. And now I also wanted to show you, because I think that this is very, very interesting, um, a few errors you might run into. So errors you might run into, uh, especially when it comes to, uh, well, those sets and those uh, ideas. So once again, we can, what we can do is we're going to say this, we're going to say uncomment to see errors. And then I'm going to actually copy over both of the things that I wanted to show you. Oh, errors right here. So there you go. And what this is, the first one is the index out of bounds exception. We've seen something very similar where we had the array index out of bounds exception. Now this is pretty much the same thing just for a list or a different collection. So if I run this at the very end, as you can see, we're going to get an index out of bounds exception. And you can see that the stack trace here is actually a little bit more because it actually goes into the array list and then it goes into the objects. So there's um, a lot more that happens sort of behind the scenes here. However, once again, it points to the exact right uh, line here that we need to check. And of course, this doesn't work because we're trying to get the element with index two. However, because we've removed an in something here, right? So before it would have been in what hemisphere is Brazil, but because we removed the element right here, right? Now we only have two, a length of two, but this list, therefore, element with index two doesn't exist anymore. So that's the index out of bounds exception. It's probably going to happen to you quite a few times. No worries at all. And then there's not an exception here. However, when we pass in a key into a map that does not exist, it might lead to some issues because the return is going to be null. So if I say, hey, what is the capital of M Malta here? We're going to re get returned a null. And this might, you know, not be what you want. So either you have to check for null, making sure that whatever you're getting out of this is not null, or beforehand you can always check, hey, does this contain the key? And then basically then not ask for it or something like that. So that's uh, one more important thing that might not be an exception or an error, but it is a null, which might then lead uh, to errors down the line. That's sort of the idea, right? So this was a very packed uh, tutorial here. Array lists, map sets, all called collections. So that's sort of the idea. There are even more, you know, different uh, data types, which we're not going to discuss right now. This is not like an introduction to computer science, right? Where you have to know every data type, like stacks and queues and all of that craziness. It's going to be fine. Usually you're going to be fine with those, especially when it comes to Minecraft modding, the set, the list, maybe a map. That's going to be, you're going to be a rock star with that. Genuinely, if you know those three, everything's going to be fine. Otherwise, of course, there's a lot of other resources as well. Um, I might link a few in the description below. Uh, otherwise, that would actually be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would, of course, appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.